Hi there! Today I'm continuing a rewatch I'm doing of Twin Peaks, the television show, and currently I'm on to season two, episode 19, which is called The Black Widow, and it was directed by Caleb Deschanel and written by Harley Payton and Robert Engels. Okay, does anybody else think that Ben Horn goes crazy just a little bit too quickly? He was a really bad guy. <laughs> and then this transition into like total crazy person. I mean, from the clothes he's wearing to the activities he's doing. Uh, it's just a little bit of a too rapid of a transformation. Okay, so Ben has built this skyscraper monument piece of art in his office and he still thinks that he has this business acumen but clearly he, he has gone a little mad and when Bobby comes in I mean Bobby's trying to get to the point you know trying to engage in business I think Ben to some degree still thinks he is functioning normally and that this monument he has built is testament to his amazing uh, skills in life and he is going around wearing <laughs> the clothing of like a rich man he has this uh, tie on that has a, a, like a metropolitan landscape on it suggesting that he is a savvy businessman maybe and he's wearing like this smoking <laughs> jacket I think that's what you call him which looks like it's it's quite made out of high quality materials and that would have cost a lot of money along with his business shirt and tie. He is still holding on to the Ben that he wants to be, the Ben that he he knows. He, he, he is trying to hold on to that image of himself. But he feels in some way that his identity has been eroded, I think, by recent events. Okay, so Cooper is looking at real estate options and he is well into the Twin Peaks lifestyle now wearing the Jackie shirt. And that's a typical Cooper thing to do, I think, tossing the coin to see which property is going to suit his needs. Um, he lets fate make the choice. <laughs> okay, so we have Lucy, Andy and Dick talking about little Nicky as if he's almost like a little dog. I mean to trust the three of these guys with the welfare of a, of a damaged child uh, it, it, <sighs> and I think it's I think it's a bit f funny that they use that kind of dark um, what is it Laura's theme <laughs> over the top of Dick asking what happened to little Nicky's parents because you get the sense that this storyline no matter how dark it gets will always be kind of silly. <laughs> I mean Andy gets a lot funnier in this season. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Once again I feel like it's slightly inappropriate musical choice with this uh, romantic and sad theme played in the background. I just feel like we're being squeeze to try and feel something in in these scenes that isn't necessarily um, there. So is this what Twin Peaks looks like when there isn't any huge horror horror or danger in sight? You know, we've we've um, dealt with the Laura Palmer um, sadness and now are we to assume that this is what Twin Peaks is like when there isn't any bad things happening or are we just seeing that superficial facade again that the one that Laura was hiding behind I mean everything even even the even a death is kind of turned into a humorous situation so far in this episode I like the stuff with Donna and Mike in the school because of the fact that it reminds you that they are still teenagers and um, we have a lot of the other teenage uh, characters doing other things such as, you know, Audrey's not in school, Bobby's not in school, James has left and <laughs> it's just refreshing to see 
Donna and Mike and to be reminded of their history as well. Uh, it was kind of more of a serious issue in the past, I think, in other episodes and in maybe Firewalk With Me. This is not working. My freaking computer is not playing this disc today. So, so James, as soon as he has left Twin Peaks, find him, finds himself in a situation that is really um, difficult to deal with for a guy of his age, I think. It's, it's like an adult situation. So I think that is something that is definitely challenging to him. It's going to be challenging and is something that will create a lot of character and and of course I think that this thing with James is is the perfect thing for him to take his mind off what has happened so I think that he probably would possibly think that no matter what the situation was he is getting himself into that it's a distraction from reality from his reality I'm having trouble with this disc it is not playing Okay, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to skip that scene with Cooper because the disc is sticking in that part. <laughs> but <laughs> I know he goes to Dead Dog Farm and he finds out, he finds out that um, there are traces of cocaine in the building and has been used as sort of like a backwater kind of um, hideout for drug criminals. <laughs> okay. Uh, so they have little Nikki dressed exactly the same as as Dick, which is pretty funny. Okay, so there is the suggestion that little Nikki is somehow evil, but you don't really get the sense that he is like inhabited by an evil spirit, like like Bob or whatever. It, it just there is too much humor in that storyline to to consider that. I think. Uh, it just seems like I think as a as a as a viewer you see this kid and you can't accept that there might be anything more nefarious going on with him and that actually it's only the stupidity of Dick and Andy that's that makes you think that because of their misfortunes they are apt to blame that on the child and not on themselves where in, where in fact they are pretty incompetent at least <laughs> in, in a variety of things I think that both Dick and Andy um, are lacking. So Cooper and Harry are talking about Major Briggs's disappearance and when Cooper is asked whether he had any visual contact with owls. It sounds a little strange, but um, I think that implies that, you know, everybody that is investigating this knows that the the animals, the wildlife as he refers to it broadly, are being utilized by the inhabiting parasitic spirits like Bob. And this, um, what is he, a general or something? This general guy, um, he implies that what is going on with, with the messages that they are intercepting from the middle of Twin Peaks, so serious and real that it's a matter of national security, um, possibly, you know, has, I mean, it has worldwide significance. And he also says a bit about Major Briggs being a very intelligent guy. He talks about Major Briggs having um, something that most people don't have and I think that is not only referring to his intellect but it also refers to his uh, spiritual awareness. Mind your own business. <laughs> so when James says I know what it's like to be alone, does he mean right right now in this in this situation that he finds himself in or does he mean he always feels alone when he's in Twin Peaks? I think generally in life that James must see himself as this kind of lone figure you know driving off on his in his motorcycle. Okay so there's some playful flirtation between Bobby and Audrey again. Uh, Audrey seems to be very much in control of of the situation. I think Bobby is is being led by 
the idea that being friendly with the boss's daughter might earn him some favours, but I think as well that who could fail to find Audrey attractive? Piss off. <laughs> so I'm just talking to my dog. <laughs> so I have seen some talk from other fans mentioning the fact that there's a lot of people who seem to be a little crazy in Twin Peaks and especially maybe in the second season and that perhaps it's the influence of the lodges that cause this madness. I mean, if you look at the population who we are seeing, um, a higher degree than average, I would say, are kind of are, are mentally unstable in some way. So there's got to be a reason for that, I guess. Um, I don't think it's just the remoteness of Twin Peaks. Well, that's an interesting comment by um, Pete about Josie, saying that he doesn't believe that Josie could ever have been a bad girl. <laughs> um, because the Josie he knows is as sweet as anything. He just doesn't understand how she could have done anything bad. And I think that highlights the duality, the dual, the dual nature of Josie. You know, she is black and white she she is dark and light she she is good and bad and depending on who she has contact with in the world they see her in diff they see her in different ways so we're constantly getting a new depiction of Josie from, from different people i feel like this chess game with Wyndham Earl has been done many times since twin peaks aired a lot of TV shows, I think, have copied this idea of the villain uh, playing a game with the protagonist. So Audrey is still sleuthing. I think she's been attracted by the by the work of the FBI and Cooper's lifestyle and how exciting it all is. And I think it's it's gone beyond just wanting to make things right um, in regards to what her father has done. I think. I think she enjoys it. I think it's something that she would probably be great at in her career. Her interest is piqued even more when Denise arrives and she um, realizes that the FBI is not uh, all a men's world. And the way she kisses Cooper as well, I think perhaps maybe she thinks in a couple of years time I could be in the FBI and Cooper and I would be equals. I don't know but she she certainly gives him a good smack. Norma and Ed's situation is just endlessly sad to me. The pair of them, Norma and Ed, constantly keep coming together and exclaiming to one another that they are unhappy with their lives and yet it seems like this is just going to keep on happening. Okay, okay, um, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry I keep saying okay, but uh, for Dick to come in and just say uh, little Nicky is the devil, <laughs> it, it's incredibly funny. But at the same time, um, given what we've seen <laughs> with, with other characters and how we know that there is pure evil, <laughs> I guess it's it's not outside the realms of possibility, except that it's just so ridiculous <laughs> that you know that that would be the case because it's it's written to be a comedy storyline, and I love it when Andy he is just so <laughs> he just uh, he accepts this um, suggestion of Dick's so earnestly like yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that, but wow, you know, the devil. So this conversation between Bobby and his mother um, indicates that Bobby, I think, has thought a lot more to his father since we first met him in season one. Um, you know, there was there was a lot of tension between father and son, and Bobby wasn't willing to listen to anything his father had to say. He um, acted as if he acted as if he hated his father almost and he resented his work and now I think 
he seems to be a lot more willing to accept that his father is engaged in very important work and and that through certain conversations they've had such as the one he highlights in talking to him in the diner where Major Briggs discusses the vision he had of Bobby being successful in the future and happy I think Bobby understands now that that's the way his father communicates and that's the only way he can and I don't think he's just saying this to his mother to make her feel better I think he genuinely believes that so at the end of that scene Major Briggs reappears he seems confused about how long he's been away suggesting that wherever he has been time hasn't worked the same and he's also dressed a little odd now <laughs> I I think that in general the Twin Peaks fashions are a little antiquated um, but it has been pointed out by other fans that Major Briggs is wearing a pilot's outfit from like the 1930s period uh, so there is the possibility that he actually has been moving through time and this scene is a little reminiscent of the Agent Jeffrey scene in Fire Walk With Me and I think it's awesome that <laughs> one of the first thing he's, he says you know put out your cigarette and make me a cocktail no matter what traumas he's been through he is pretty uh, strong-minded to be able to deal with it and to snap back to reality. He is handling the shock well. And it's a pretty traumatic scene with, with the storm and everything. Suggesting the idea of great tumult, maybe nature being involved in, in what has happened to Major Briggs. That is the end of the episode. I think it was an alright episode. I liked the latter half better than the first part. And I, we, I think we we get to experience the perspective of a lot of characters in in this episode. And even if they are in the episode for just a short period of time, I like like Donna. She we just blink and you miss her in that episode. I think we got a sense that you know this is Twin Peaks and Twin Peaks is still everybody's still there doing their thing except for James who was off with Evelyn. Uh, the stuff with Evelyn I think I, it feels like a little the, the, some of the scenes feel a little bit too long for my liking. Um, I think they could have <laughs> I think they could have truncated those scenes a little bit just to make them more palatable. <laughs> yeah um, I do, I do like the idea that James is embarking on this very adult affair um, just because I think I think ultimately it will make a man of him uh, that's the sense that you get straight off I really like the presence of Denise in this episode I think she's a fascinating character I think David Duchovny brings brings a lot of um, has a lot to do with why that character is is so appealing the stuff with Andy and Lucy and Dick. Um, I think it's interesting that Dick is almost sidelining Lucy in favour of his adventures with Andy and who he now thinks is the devil, little Nicky. I think, I think that 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 situation with the three of them not knowing who the father was didn't seem like it get, could get any more ludicrous and ridiculous but it does by the second. One interesting thing is that Major Briggs when he reappears it appears that he reappears through the fabric of the universe or whatever you want to call it um, in his own home like when we saw Agent Jeffries uh, in the FBI agents building he just appeared there like it was something he willed and I think that must have happened to Major Briggs as well wherever he's been. I don't think whatever power that dis made them disappear didn't... I don't think that they, the power would have placed them back in these places like Major Briggs' home and the FBI headquarters. I think that to me it makes more sense that they would have willed themselves there. I think there's often the idea that in Twin Peaks that things in nature are a bit scary and a bit 
untouchable, remote, um, un the unknown. And I think that to think of the lodge as being located in the woods, it just cements that idea. I think we're exploring a lot of characters from different from a different angle to how we saw them before. So that's it for now. Um, next week I'm going to be watching episode 20. Um, thank you very much for watching today and you can subscribe to this channel if you want to keep to up to date with any of the rewatches I'm doing. And you can follow me on Twitter at the Log Sadie as well. That's it. Goodbye.